Hey guys, Professor Gooden here, and in this Excel tutorial, I'm going to show you how to calculate measures of central tendency as well as measures of variability. And if you stick around to the end, I'll also show you how to calculate quartiles and percentiles in Excel. I'm here in Excel, and if you want to follow along, you can download this spreadsheet from the video description below. Just click on the link, download it, open it up, and you can follow along at home. Okay, so I've got the Excel document opened up, and what we're looking at is an array of back squat one repetition maximum data. And I've used this data set before, but let's just take a look. I'm gonna hit Command Shift down arrow to go down to the bottom, and it looks like we have 1,000 values here and command up arrow to go back to the top and we're going to calculate a few things so first we'll have measures of central tendency so mean median and mode how do we calculate those things i have the excel function next to the statistic that we want to calculate and we're just going to go ahead and use these functions and plug them into a table so i will hit equals average and what I'll do now is actually select this whole data set. So click on the top one, command shift down arrow. And then I will close the parentheses and hit enter. We'll see that the mean back squat one repetition maximum is 100.13 kilograms. Now I actually want to round that just to the nearest 10th. So I will decrease my number of decimals there by clicking on this number right here to round to the nearest 10th. And let's actually center that as well. Okay, so that's the mean. Now, what's the median? Let's use the equal sign, type in median. And instead of selecting this whole array manually, because that takes a while each time, I'm just going to type in B3 colon B1002. Hit enter. Okay, so the median is 100, so very close. And what is the mode? What which score occurs most frequently? Type in mode, B3, 2, B, 1003. And I'm actually going to highlight this and copy, Command C, just so that I can copy and paste it anytime I want. And the mode is 103. Okay, so there are our measures of central tendency arrayed in our table. Now what about measures of variability? So here we have some different measures of variability that we could calculate, but first I have to explain a couple of them to you. You'll see two instances of variance and two instances of standard deviation. Now Excel has um, two different functions for each of these, and the reason is because, as I've talked about before, the variance of the population versus the sample will be slightly different because we need to control the degrees of freedom in the variance or the standard deviation of a sample in order to account for any bias that might be present because of a smaller sample. So anytime you're using a sample of data instead of a population, you want to use this dot s variation of these two functions. If you have the entire sample at your disposal, if somehow you've measured that trait in every single person in the entire population, that you are interested in, then you can use the dot p example. So most of the time with data that we've collected, we'll use these two dot s versions. Okay, so first the range, which we've done before, that's just the maximum number minus the minimum number. So what I'll do here is type in equals max. And then remember I copied the range previously, so I'll just paste it in, close parentheses, minus the min hit enter. So the range is 218 kilograms from the strongest person to the weakest person. Variance, we will use var dot s because this is a sample. And we will plug in that range. And boom, we've got a fairly high variance there. Now remember the variance is the sum of the squared deviations from the mean. Let's decrease the number of decimals and let's calculate standard deviation. So equals stdev dot s. And 
rounded to the nearest tenth, and our standard deviation is 29.9. Now recall that the standard deviation is merely the square root of the variance, so let's, let's test that and see right here. Let's go equals sqrt, that's the square root function, and we'll grab the variance, and boom, look at that, 29.9. Okay, so we're on the right track here. Now the coefficient of variation, remember this is this is like a standardized measure of variability. So we can actually compare coefficients of variation between different data sets, even if they have different units of measurement. And we do that by dividing the standard deviation by the mean to cancel out the units. So let's grab the standard deviation. So click equals standard deviation divided by the mean, which we've already calculated, hit enter, and let's turn this into a percent, and it rounded up to 30%. So that's a fairly large coefficient of variation. A smaller percentage would mean it's a smaller coefficient of variation. Okay, so now we have this nice table giving us some measures of central tendency and some measures of variability. Now, usually in your data sets, you're not going to report all of these. The most common ones to report are the mean and the standard deviation. So we would report those within the text of our paper like this, we might write 100.1 plus or minus the standard deviation of 29.9 kilograms. <clears throat> so that's a good way to represent our data that shows a measure of central tendency, the mean, and a measure of variability, the standard deviation. Now, <clears throat> what about percentiles and quartiles? So we know that quartiles divide our data up into four parts, but because there are four sections of data, there's actually five data points, starting from the minimum data point going all the way up to the highest data point. <clears throat> A percentile, we can grab any percentile that we want to, but what I've done here is I've just typed in um, you know, 0, 25, 50, 75 and 100 percentiles in order to correspond with those five points to depict the quartiles. Okay, so you'll, it'll make sense as I plug in the equations. So for percentiles and quartiles, there's actually two different functions in Excel. We are going to use the inclusive functions, so dot .inc. There's also an exclusive function that gives you a slightly different measure that's farther away from the mean when you plug it in and it doesn't include the top or the bottom scores. So we want to use the inclusive version, uh, which is the percentile.inc or quartile.inc. All right, so I'll type in equals quartile.inc, and, and this function asks for an array, so I'll give it the array where our data is, and then I'll type comma to separate it, and then it asks for which quartile do I want to calculate? And so zero is the minimum value, one would be the top value in the first quartile, two is the top value in the second quartile, three the top value in the third quartile, and four the maximum value, or the top value in the fourth quartile. Now instead of typing in a number though, I'm actually going to reference cell G13, which has a zero in it already. Close the parentheses and hit enter. And so we see that the minimum value here is 6. And I'll just double click this to drag it all the way down. And now we can see the values that represent the top of each quartile. 224 should be the max value as the top of the fourth quartile. Let's just see if that's the case in a random cell. I'm going to type in equals max of the, of the data set. Hit enter and it is 224. Great. Now let's calculate these scores based on percentiles. Okay, so I'll type in equals percentile.inc, plug in my array, comma, and then it asks for k, which k is equal to the percentile that you are wanting Excel to return. So I'm just going to go over to this i13 cell where I already have the percentile. Okay, so I've already plugged the percentile in there as zero, and this now is referencing this percentile, looking in this array, 
and giving me the score that matches that percentile, and that's a score of six. I'll copy that down, and we'll see that we get the same numbers as the quartiles, but that's just because I put in the percentiles corresponding to those same numbers in the quartile. All right, if I were to change these, maybe instead of the 75th percentile, I actually wanted the 85th percentile. I'm gonna hit enter. Now it's just gonna change that value for me. Okay, let's undo that, Command Z. Now if you wanted to, you could compute deciles fairly quickly. Let's just do that together. Decile, score. <clears throat> we'll center that, put some nice borders, maybe top and a bottom border to keep it consistent. Okay, so let's put in the deciles and we want to start with zero and then 0 0.1, 0 0.2, etc. And Excel should hopefully recognize this formula. Yes, there we go. We just drag that um, pattern down and Excel recognizes the pattern. Center that. And now to compute the score. So we want to type in equals percentile dot INC, give it the array of data, and then reference that percentile. Okay, we'll double click the bottom right corner. And now look, now we have the deciles all the way down. Remember, deciles divides your data set into 10 equal parts. So you could quickly reference, okay, you know, what score do you have to get to be in the, you know, above the 70th percentile? We could quickly look here, and if you back squat 114 kilograms, then that automatically puts you above the 70th percentile, or in or above the 70th percentile. Okay, now the last little thing I want to show you guys is how to input a score and then output both the rank and the percentile of that score given a certain data set. Okay, so down here we have score, rank, and percentile. Now, I'm just going to actually format these a little bit so we can see them more clearly. So let's say that I back squatted 130 kilograms. And I want to know what rank and percentile that is given these thousand other lifters that we've measured here. So first let's do the percentile. We can actually use a function called percentrank.inc. So let's type that in, percentrank.inc. We are going to input the array of data that Excel we'll check our score against. So I'll just hit Command V because I still have that copied to the clipboard. Type in a comma to separate the inputs. It asks for X, which is the score in question. So we will reference this score. And then the last input significance is optional, so we're not going to do anything with that. Let's just close the parentheses, hit Enter, and I can see that a back squat of 130 kilograms would put me in the 85th percentile. Let's just change this to a decimal. There we go. Now, what does that rank me though out of all of these 1,000 scores? So we are going to use the rank.average function. Now, the tricky thing with the rank.average function is that it will index all of these scores, but if your score does not exist within here, let's say there's a score right at 129 and at 131, but nobody back squatted, 130 exactly, it will return an error. So let's see if it returns an error or not. So there's our number, and then it asks for a reference, and that would be the array. And for order, we want to put in a zero for descending, because in this case, the top score, the first place score, would be the heaviest back squat, the largest number. If this was, let's say, a data set full of 100 meter sprint times, then we would want to put in a one for ascending, because the lowest number of seconds that it takes you to complete the 100 meters in would be the best score. But in this case, the higher number is better. So we'll put in a zero, close the parentheses and hit enter. And then we see that the rank of this score is 144. So if you were to back squat 130 kilograms, then out of a thousand people, you would rank 144 and you'd be in the 85th percentile. But what about 140 kilograms? Let's say that you hit 140, you're really pumped because that puts you in the 300 pound club for the back squat. Hit enter, and look, that brings you up a little bit. So now you're not only, not only do you rank 91 out of 1,000, but you're also in the 91st percentile. Okay, another 10 kilo jump, hit enter, and 
we can see you're now in the 94th percentile, but this rank function, it actually returns an error because nobody in this data set squatted exactly 150 kilograms. So let's see 151. Okay, so that puts you right at 55 and a half. So what this is doing is splitting the difference. There are multiple scores at 151. And so it kind of it splits the rank there for you. Okay guys, thanks for checking out those measures of central tendency and variability with me, as well as percentiles and quartiles. Now in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to do some of this in SPSS. So stay tuned for that. And as always, live well, move well, and keep teaching other people to do the same.